names do hurt because they seed and they lodge and they find resting places. That is why most of us can remember what our teacher said to us. Some of us are still dealing with issues from what our teacher said, our first grade teacher said. You won't be nothing, nothing good comes out of you. Your daddy wasn't nothing, your mama wasn't nothing, you won't be anything. We remember a lot of negative things, right? And it takes a lot of time someone to come in and to intervene and to intercept and stop and block that because at the end of this message, ultimately we're speaking of breakthrough an opening where we bust through a breach where we tear apart things from our past that have had us blocked and stopped and not walking in what? In purpose. But then we have another situation in eight where it says, and I'm kind of going fast, O-N-N, O-N-A-N, pain, force, iniquity to experience much trouble or have vigor. At the end of it, it says vigor. So you have a, a lot of vigor or fervor and yet there's pain. So there's an acting out according to what this tells me of the name, Onan, the second son. Then we have once again, but Onan knew that the heir, we're dealing with generation. I'm gonna read it for those that weren't here and Judah said to Onan, go into your brother. Now we have a situation where we have another son that ends up healed. We have a woman by the name of Tamar in the Bible, Genesis 38, Tamar, and it means date, fruit, palm. And then when you extract that a little bit further, then it means victory. Remember Deborah, the judge, reigned under the palm trees and judged Israel. They were victorious during that reign. Palm tree, victorious, prosperity. So we have a woman who perhaps she married Ur, the one that, the Lord killed because evidently there was no maturity and there was something that was going on with him. The Bible does not tell us what he did. He just said he did wicked in the sight of the Lord. Then she goes and she is told her father-in-law said, go into your brother's wife and marry her and raise up an heir for your brother. Are you with me today? But Onan knew that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass when he emitted the seed on the ground. Now this right here is the breaking of the law because we know that this is a uh, leveret law where you would take on the responsibility of your brother's wife. If you die, the widow, can I, I want to ask you something. Can you see this? Can you see that? You can't? Can anybody see? Can you see that? No? You can see it? I, am, am I? Okay. Let me tell you something that's very interesting. I did that purposely. This is the first time. This exactly what happened there. I pulled this out. When I came back, my mother moved it. And I said, well, wh where is it at? I'm going to tell you what's up in a minute. Okay. And I'm like, well, wh what did she do with it? With it. And then I, looked, I said, oh, there it is. I picked it up again. And then I put something next to it that I'm going to show you. You can't see this, people of God. It's purpose. But you don't see it yet. It's a seed. It's a seed. But it needs to go into something. 
in order to become this right here. This is not from Safeway. It's not from QFC. In order to become this, this came from the garden. But you don't see this in this. You don't see these. It is so small, it disappears at times. And I got long nails and they hide up in the nails, but you, you cannot see this in this until it goes into the ground, until it goes into the soil that has been fertilized to be able to procreate and create. It has to go into something. This man broke the law. On end. The semen of a man. Please stay with me this morning. The semen of a man. It is amazing to me that God has given man and woman the ability to procreate. He's given man this ability to be aroused. Are you with me today? Hallelujah. And I want you to consider worship. When you worship God and you arouse God, See, Song of Solomon says it best. When you arouse the lover, hallelujah. When you, th this scares some people off. When you worship him to a place where he rises up and then you begin to go in and begin to say, thank you, Lord. You begin to worship in spirit and in truth. Something has to happen. Hallelujah. Something has to happen, but purpose is a very interesting thing because to me, purpose is not a thing. It's a person. It's a person. And so when something in our lives looks so small, our ministry, or we've been asked to start a prayer ministry or a youth ministry or a church, a, 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 chat ministry or a men's ministry and we we don't know what's going on because no one is showing up because it looks like this we we keep calling but no one shows up we keep uh texting but sometimes no one shows up because it looks like this you can't see it yet mm. but it's got to go through some stages don't Spill the seed. The seed. The seed. What is it in the seed? But I can't even show you because it's so small. What's in your womb? What is in your spiritual womb? Are you purposed for something great? I believe that you are. But you don't know yet because it doesn't look like this. And so when he emits his semen, which is to go in to bring about offspring so that his brother's legacy, his inheritance can live on and be a part of something great, he spills it every time he goes into a, why? Because he does not want to go without having a name, his own name. Inheritance will not be mine. She'll get half the estate. And I won't have the pleasure of it being mine. Not knowing that God would get in that. It's a violation and it's a lack of responsibility when we consider in this modern day and current time of the lack of commitment within our culture. And everybody is out to get, when you look at social media, you have to use discernment because everyone is out to get, out to get, out to get. It's a selfie time that we live in. So if it's not gonna be mine, 
It's not going to have my name on it. If my ministry does not take off in three days and I'm on buses and on planes riding back and forth because it does not look like this yet, because someone has said it has to go into the ground. It has to go through a maturation period and a process. And yet I'm ready. I'm ready. I got my new suit. I got my new dress and I'm ready to get on the plane. And yet you have not been matured yet. To have anything even to say, nor do you even know how to properly study or lead the people, nor have you been through wisdom enough or guided enough to be able to speak to a body of people because you've got a one prophetic word that can go forth. And yes, God is using his people, but there's wisdom in this hour. We need to understand that God is growing us up to a place where we don't look at what we see, but we look at what we know God has said and hold on. It's no longer for us to be baby Christians, to whine to God, for him to wave a magic wand and to pow things into existence for us. Yes, we can cry and we can weep, but joy cometh in the morning for those that know how to hang in there, that understand that a seed will become a tomato, a seed will become something great, ministry, promotion, whatever God has called you to. But we cannot escape process. Judah, when you look at Judah, why did Judah leave? Did Judah consult with God before he left? Do we consult with God or are we having a bad month? And so now we want to move to California. And the grass is green on the side. The grass is burnt up over there too. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You Look, let me tell you something. We are proud of our lawn, right? I'm going to tell you. I can look over there and say, oh, we want our grass like that. But it depends on what angle that you see it at. If I go over there and stand in a certain area, it's burnt up over there too. So we can't leave and run from challenges. We can't leave the minute and, 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 and be moody. Sometimes we can be some of the moodiest people. Today we're fine. Tomorrow we're not. Can we be faithful to the process and realize that commitment as children of God, we need to be committed to the process. We need to understand this does not happen overnight. Ah, oh, where's our grit at? Yes. And I know that we are people of grit, soldiers in this army. This fight is not easy. But if we can be committed and quit running from the very thing that we need to face. Non-committed men and women in this hour, I have sex with you, but I'm not going to put a ring on it. I have sex with you, but I'm not going to commit. Sex is good enough because I feel good. I feel good today on a Monday because you fill me up. But there's no commitment to God, there's no commitment to our today for our tomorrow. And so we shy away from real counsel and getting information that we need and insight on what marriage looks like or talking, being counseled by God. We leave, what was Judah doing when he left? Why did he leave? I don't know. leaving jobs, leaving cities and states because it looks like there's a lot of men there, a lot of prosperity. Let me go over there, let me go down there. It's looking good. The same challenge that you had when you were here, wherever here is for you, you will have wherever you go. If you did not conquer it, it will come right back up in your face. We can't keep switching but sometimes God has called us to stay in a place for his glory to be revealed in perhaps a place that would not see it if we were not there. No, we can't, Erica. We cannot escape process. So when we look at this place, Bible says that 
Shazib, Shazib, C-H-E-Z-I-B. And in some places it felt different, but it was at Shazib when she bore Shayla, which was the third son, which means petition. The name is derived from the word disappointment, delusion, lying, fraudulent, deceitful, false hopes, idols. In this place of disappointment, I'm stuck in this place Whatever it is, I've been divorced in Tamar's place, like I said last week. And I wanted to just review, but I feel in my spirit to go here again. Tamar means prosperity, but she was not seeing prosperity in these first chapters. Her first husband died. She's a widow. The second one refused to go into her and to allow her to produce. So now we have someone who is abandoned. Remember during this time, women were in different positions. So if you married a woman or if she became a widow and the brother was given to you, you're dealing with a woman that has stability, some status, because it was all about producing in this way. Am I making sense? Producing from her womb in this way. There's a lot of producing that we do now. You know, we're not counted just for producing. If that was the case, I wouldn't be anything if it, if it all had to do with uh, what came out of your womb. Amen. But I've been pregnant a bunch of times and I've had a bunch of babies. I, 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 and I'm good with that. I'm rested in where I am. I'm not disappointed. I'm not blaming God. In a time that we live in, consider commitment. When there's lack of commitment, it's usually connected with those that always blame. Yeah, because when you are not committed, you give up or you stop in the middle of. You get off the train, you, you know what I'm saying? You, it's taking too long. You will not commit, you will not be devout. You will not uh, 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 commit yourself, whether it's ministry or whatever. And so usually it's always someone did something. I'm church hurt, which can be valid, but everybody ain't church hurt. Yeah, everybody ain't church hurt. Trust that. But it's something that Deborah did to make me live, leave. Now, now here's the thing. If it's something that Deborah said out of this word of God, and, and, and just as an example, and, and, and a person leaves, so be it. That word will never be compromised. Never. This is why you use study guides to take and get right words and not just pull stuff out the Bible and just spew it out there. But you get the entire text and what surrounds it so that you can get the entire meaning. And then you have a covering to those that are just coming up. You run it by them. You run it past them. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? It's your protection. Least you get out here, whether it's ministry or anything else in life. 
Do you allow God to consult you? Is he first and priority before you make moves? Because moves you make can impact your future seed and an entire generation. There's relevance in genealogy. And the reason why we read it once again is to see God's grace has navigated and went throughout your family and my family. So we can say, wow, I did that, but God's grace is amazing. He's the only one that can get the glory because Uncle Cantaloupe ended up. He ended up, he ended up saved and in the lineage of Christ. What happens with this story as we move forward is we see that this woman ends up in a situation where she was told to go back to her father's household. We have abandonment issues. We have issues here of um, perhaps that still have not been dealt with because now she gonna be every woman. <laughs> she about to be every woman. And I told you last week, I'm not mad at her. We're gonna finish this out today. I'm not mad at her. She did what she knew. Some today will say she was secure in the bag. Some would say today she's chasing the coin. Whatever and however, I told you that she was complicated to me and I couldn't figure her out because with my judgmental self, I wanted to make her be, well, well what did she do? And how did she do it? And then that's when I told you last week, I realized that shoot, that's me. That's you. Maybe not the same set of, 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 of uh, scenarios, but somehow in there, I can understand, let me secure something for myself because look, I ain't getting paid. I'm talking to us or I'm not getting paid enough or I haven't got the phone call. Oh man, I didn't get that grant. Oh man, I missed that check. So then you begin to go into flesh and forget that God is still in control even when we make mistakes. When we look at this, palm tree has yet to walk in her name. And what she does, Sister Cynthia, and she goes back to her father's house. And then it says, now in the process of time in 3812, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shears at Timnah. He and his friend, Hira the Dulamite. I don't know about you. This is just me. The, the friend from Adulam, he's bugging me. Something's up with him. That's just my take on it. It's like... <laughs> Did you get him into this trouble? Who, where'd you come from? You know what I'm saying? What's up with you? And it was told Tamar saying, look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. This was a time that they would go up. Again, consider it celebration. Consider it payday. And they're going up. So what happens is the men, and now he's over the death of his wife. He goes up. And there's other men that come. Tamar, knowing this, she goes and she disguises herself. And she sits at an entrance, let's say, knowing that he will pass by. Knowing evidently the nature and character of Judah has yet to become what and who he will be. He's still within the mind of the one that plotted with his brothers. Things change, y'all. Again, consider your family. Consider your friends. 
Ah, we should be witnesses. And then it says that she took off her widow's garment in 14, covered herself with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah, for she saw that she, uh, Shelah was grown and she was not given to him as a wife. Once again, she sees the son that should have been promised to her. So here I am again, attracting what? Does anyone love me? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been heartbroken? <laughs> Have you ever thought something that you thought? But it wasn't. And you're like, whoa, I thought that was the one. I thought this was it. So once again, I can imagine just the, 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 the sense of a woman and the inner part of her. Let's move forward. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot because she had covered her face. Then he turned to her by the way and said, please let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. So she said, what will you give me that you may come into me? And he said, I will send a young goat from the flock. So she said, will you give me a pledge till you send it? Then he said, what pledge shall I give you? So she said, your signet and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave them to her and went into her and she conceived by him. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood, 20. And Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Dulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he did not find her. 21, then he asked the men of that place, saying, where is the harlot who was openly by the roadside? And they said there was no harlot in the place. Now we're coming to an end here, but... Let's call it like we see it. You're in the bed with someone who doesn't know who you are. You're in the bed with someone who does not know who you are. Someone is gone into you, has no clue that you are his daughter-in-law. So we're dealing with what's going on with you. You don't, you don't hear her voice. I'm single. I always got to say the sisters, be careful. Who you line up with in the time that we live in. Let a man hear your voice. Let a man see your face. Let a man get to know you just as a friend. Yeah. I'm up in here. I'm going I'm to I'm bring it home. Having sex with you and you don't even know me. You don't know me. <laughs> but because I know your nature and your character, I got you. Because I'm about to collect. Whether you agree with this or not, she was securing her posterity. She was securing her future. She was collecting resources that this man in, 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 in the midst of ecstasy was willing to give a go. In other words, you're not leaving here. This, this that you're promising me, you're going to have to give me something else until that goat can come. So I'm about to collect things that are very valuable. I'm going to collect the signet ring which is your signature. It identified them in that period of time. I'm about to collect the cord. I'm about to collect the staff, which represents authority. I'm, I'm collecting your authority. I'm getting your signature. And I'm getting a very expensive piece of cord. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says a three-fold cord is not easily broken. In other words, it's harder to untie it. So I'm about to tie you up. And I'm about to get you into a position where you're going to find that you have just given me the right to shift from the position I'm in to another position. Somebody say that you may not agree with it, but all things are about to work for the good of those that love God and that are in his will. All things are about to work for the good. 
all things are about to work for the good because I'm about to end up somewhere. I'm not quite sure where, but I think somehow or another, this bypasses you. Hallelujah. Ah, this bypasses you with your plotting self, but even with you, Judah, you're going to come to a place where you're going to even make an atonement and you are going to step into a position of being mature and even understand what God has called you to. Because when we get to Matthew, I'm going to show up, baby. Hallelujah. Because breakthrough, hallelujah, is coming out of my loneliness. I don't care what you've been through or what your kids are going through now, but someone needs to declare parades. P-E-R-E-S, breakthrough. I'm about to rip through some of the things my teachers told me. I'm about to rip through some of the things that people have told me about myself that are not true. And some of the stuff I agree with, I'm about to bypass. I'm not going to be number two anymore because I have things to do. I finally realized who I am at another level. There's another level of freedom in me and I'm declaring it to you as well. Do you know that you are called and chosen and purposed? And even though you may not be able to see it now, you better believe it's going to come into you. with myself but you better give me something because we're going to lock this thing in you're going to give me some documentation uh, some costly documentation because break forth is on the horizon hallelujah break forth is on the horizon for T.O.P. breakthrough is on the horizon for my uh, uh, sisters and brothers in Christ today breakthrough is here only if you hold on to it and quit changing. Be who God has called you to be. Be all of it. All of it. Are you with me today? Are you still with me today? Can we end this thing right? Hallelujah. When we look and we see this woman, the Bible says that in 24, let's go in 23, then Judah said, let her take them for herself. At least we'd be ashamed. Let me back up. In 20, and Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, but they could not find her. They could not find her. They said there was no harlot in this place. And so he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Also, the men of the place said there was no harlot in this place. And then Judah said, let her take them for herself. In other words, I don't want to be ashamed. When we go down to 25 and finish this off, it says when she was brought out, because Judah said, let's get this woman. Who is this woman? In other words, you don't even know who you slept with. Are, are you feeling today, uh, if you're feeling that I'm just talking about sleeping, I'm not just talking about sleeping around. It's a metaphor, y'all. That could, that could go into other places in our lives. Who am I laying with? I remember my, to paraphrase, my grandfather, my, my mother's father would say to his sons, know who you're laying with, if you're going to lay with, because you could produce a seed. Who are you laying with? And first of all, quit laying with everybody. <laughs> especially today he said when she brought out when she was brought out she sent to her father-in-law saying by the man who these things belong so Judah becomes self-righteous and wants to burn her wants to burn her but I've got some things here by someone is high value. 
because these things belong to someone that could only have status. You don't just have authority. You don't just have a staff. You don't just have a signet ring. It's a signature. It's a seal. You don't just have a cord, which represents something so crazy, it take you back to the restoration of the arts book because it's fringes, fringes that are wrapped. The other word for it is tassels. It has to do with dyeing a specific snail in the seas. And it takes a lot of the snails for the color of blue. This is when you see in the Bible, she touched and grabbed the ends of his garment. She grabbed heaven. Thank you, April. I need your help on this. I'm ending this up. Thank you. Uh, she grabbed heaven. She grabbed the tassels. It meant something. It's a lot of money to produce that particular color. So Judah's not just any man, <laughs> but right now it's more materialistic, but he's gonna make his way. Who these belong to, I am with child. And she said, please determine whose these are signet and cord and staff. Uh, look, okay, give me a minute. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you. We do not swim in shallow waters. <laughs> the signet and we get back the cord and the staff. So Judah acknowledged them and said, she has been more righteous than I. In other words, hold up. Something's happened. There's an awakening. It took this shaking, but ah, I'm beginning to know who I am because I've just admitted to my own fault. <laughs> is, it a, is it a blame game anymore? I just admit it to my own Andabushaya, hallelujah, sister Linda, my own responsibility and my own name means praise and yet I've dealt with some things because I plotted with my brothers to kill my brother and what have I done? I, I departed from my brothers and I went somewhere and did I consult with God and then I married once and had an Ur and he died and then I had an Onan and he died and then I had a Shayla and then my wife died and then I withheld Shayla and then I'm, I'm confused and I'm mixed up and maybe I'm being triggered like what's in my son's name because I haven't dealt with myself yet, hallelujah. I'm still blaming people for my yesterdays. I'm still blaming people for my mistakes and I'm not looking dead on, but this has brought Judah to a place to say, Oh my God, she's more righteous than me. What have I done here? The Bible says it came to pass at the time for the giving of the birth that behold, it wasn't just one child, hallelujah. It wasn't just one, but something had happened, hallelujah. Something came out of Judah that was required and went into this woman. And this woman had on the inside of her double for her trouble. God was going to do something that we were going to see in the genealogy in Matthew. They were going to appear in a place in time, just like Rahab, to let us know that a trick untry is hard to justify. You cannot judge what you have not been through. But I'm going from just a girl to a woman to a widow. Yeah, to a trick. I was a trick for a bit, but I'm not going to be a trick too much longer. I'm about to be a full grown woman and I'm going to push this out. And what I'm pushing out, my God, you made it have been able to see it before, but I'm pushing out 
purpose. Me and my past, me and my pain, me and my situations, me and my thinking I'm number two, me and me wanting to escape, me and me wanting to run, me and me looking and saying, God, have you forgot about me? Where are you at, oh God? You have spoken to me, but I'm not seeing anything. Folks don't even know what you've been through. You have stood in pulpits. Ah, you've sang songs. You've been on the job, and you've seen others be promoted, and they went past you, and others did not recognize you, and then you wanted to leave. But oh, don't be like Ruth and Naomi. Did God consult you to leave? Because you might just have to come back and face the challenge and realize that God is the same place and the same God in the famine as he is in the rain. She pushed out twins. And when she pushed out, the Bible says, the first one came forth and they put a scarlet around. Matthew somewhere says, and the first shall be last, and so on and so forth. The hand went back because breakthrough came forth. And breakthrough came forth. The midwife was a little confused. And what happened here? Because this right here is strange. This right here, something changed. Changed was the plan of God. Whatever your situation, whatever it looks like, God himself, is a God of the impossible. Hold on to the promises of God. This message is so deep, you got to be careful. Because you can start saying things that, that, that maybe don't make any sense. And your spirit is doing stuff. Because it deals with Leviticus and law. If we had time to go into the goat and the, the scapegoat, on your own time, if you want to go to Leviticus and look at the atonement of sin, God was in operation then. Something was happening even then. Grace even though Jesus had yet to come, was happening then. It's those people that say, I'm a dog, okay? But even the dog would take the crumb. I'll take the crumbs. You can call me what you want to call me. But this will change. Because at first, we weren't the people. I'm not supposed to be first. But I bet you I'll break through. I bet you I'll break through. Eileen, you will break through. Eileen, your family shall break through. Eileen, you shall see the goodness of the Lord and the breakthrough. You shall. Judah's redeemed. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah's redeemed, and there's a mental shift within his mind. Suddenly, he becomes the brother that all his brothers will praise. When the land is given, and the patriarch, Jacob, when he divides the land, look at what your Bible says. Because Judah gets his land and his brothers, not only are the ones that will praise him, but when you go to Genesis 44, he does a Jesus thing. 
And they go before Joseph. And Joseph standing as a type is Jesus. Judah meets him and stands as a type and says, no, let it be me. Let me be sacrificed. My father cannot bear for another son to be killed. Don't ask for Benjamin, but let it be me. Different from the plot, so let it be me. Let it be us. I pray this day that revelation has come in your personal life, in your spirit, for breakthrough to not only be on you, but in you. I pray, even though a bit lengthy, that there was understanding in the etymology and names and what they were derived from to understand that we become victory. That we become victory in our name, no matter what teacher has said to us, no matter what professor has said, Anyone has said, a woman can't do it, you're weak. Man, you can't because of this. We defy that today. And we wake up everything in us to be on purpose in Jesus' name. Amen.